Everybody watching on YouTube, I need your help. Barely any people in the office. Some of the phone calls weren't being picked up. Oh, I made a $200,000 sale. I made a $100,000 sale. What the f you mean I gotta come in on time? At least 10 calls were missed today in the morning. I really need your help with my business. This is an opportunity for you, whether you're sitting on your couch or wherever you're at, to help me with the business. It's, it's getting out of hands. Sir, when did you show up today? 10 50. 10.50? When were you supposed to show up? You'll make more money than me. You know, you make more sales, but you're at the end of the day, you know? Uh, I can't work like this. I can't operate like this. Okay, well, let's uh, talk. Take your time, take your time. No rush, no rush, boss. Where are you guys coming from? Uh, Texas. Texas, oh, that's what's up. Right there, right there, right there. It's just become, it's, it's getting out of hands. And I'm trying to understand them and, you know, be as mindful as I can, but it's affecting the hours and that's the only thing that I'm not going to allow to happen. Phone calls were ringing and I told them, right now, nobody's going to leave the mezzanine. It, all the missed calls are not answered. Call back and also all the Monday.com leads. So, since I got the managerial position, I have to say it's been a lot of progress compared to what was before because people were coming in at 1 instead of 11 a.m. and they were leaving at 4 because they had a date or they had something to do with their own life. So I was like, this is not good. I had like um, 10 people in the schedule. One was off. The rest was supposed to be here according to their schedule. What happened today is a person came in earlier. I'm, I don't want to mention names. And then after that, he had some uh, personal problems and he wanted to go home because he wasn't feeling good. And I understand that. I said, okay. Another person had a family issue, which, you know, I completely understand that too. We're human beings. Please be responsible enough to have another coworker come and get your shift. What happened today, it's unacceptable. And I was very disappointed. The calls were ringing. People were out in the mezzanine. Today I was with the two new girls that are training and also with Ilya that is training. I was the only one in here. Kenny had some customer that he to, to, to be serviced. No one there was inside in here. Later, another guy was supposed to come at 10, came at 11. And it was the whole morning shift that it was on him. I saw myself at some point within the day with the whole mezzanine empty. And no one else was there to get air call to answer the chats. What I've noticed is that they start realizing that they're making mistakes after Max raises the voice to them. Sometimes it's the best way at this environment. A lot of people are not responsible enough or grown-ups enough. So I made a big announcement and then I let Max know and I said, I need your help to have this meeting with you. The problem is that what they're doing right now, they seem to have to pull where I have this car run drop, where I have this holiday, where I have this uh, cousins coming and I have to be there. And I'm trying to understand that because we're human beings, but the thing is that they're not being responsible enough to have somebody else cover them. Mm -hmm. And I gave them also a 15 minute grace period. Right. Because of course it's too young. But then that became to a 30 minute and then it's becoming to one hour. I can't work like this. I can't operate like this. Okay, well, let's uh, talk to them right now. All right, sir, let's go one by one here. Uh, when did you come in today? 11.03. 11, 11, okay, thank you, Kenny. Sir, when did you show up today? 10.50. 10.50? When were you supposed to show up? 11. Okay, thank you. When did you show up today? 11 o'clock at the dock? So, why did you show up at 11? Uh, I guess there was a few here with the schedule. I was, I was here at 10 o'clock yesterday. I was on the phone at 10 o'clock by today. Right. Yes, sir. So, a few years. So you, you, uh, what could possibly be the confusion? You know what I'm saying? You can't make it on time? No, I, I thought I was working both the morning and the night yesterday. So. Okay, couldn't make it on time, I understand. Came in at 12.52. I was an hour late today because I was sick and also that is part of a drop. Okay, go up and drop to get sick. Yeah. Uh, well, Rodrigo. Scheduled for two, came in at two time. Doesn't even make 15 minutes early is one time. You know, yeah. or about yeah. that's yeah. when I was in court, three strikes, she were fine. Yeah. 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 Whatever it was, unless she was a national yeah. holiday, yeah. you got to be in one time to be out with Right. At least 10 calls were missed today in the morning. We also had some issues with, uh, with international numbers calling us. A guy from Germany and another woman from Switzerland, they called us and they said we can't reach the number. So I try to offer them my personal service, but sometimes people feel uncomfortable to share their number like that. 
which is fine. You know, we completely understand that, but I just want everybody to know that we're here to help. Uh, so Aircall is um, our company's number. It's just a, a, an app that we use that we receive all the, call, all the calls. It's like a call center kind of thing. On the mezzanine team, we have two ways how we receive uh, leads. First is the air call, and the other one is the website where we use the live chat. And then if uh, during the night there is no one to answer, you can make a ticket, leave your email, phone number, the item that you're looking to purchase, or you have questions about, or your order number that you need uh, help by customer service. And then we reach you the next day. It may take a couple days, but not longer than that. If it takes longer than that, that's not acceptable. And I'm making sure that that doesn't happen. But what's going on today is that nobody was in here to do their job. Nah, I want time. I try to be every time, you know? Today, a few people came late, a few people called out, barely any people in the office. Some of the phone calls weren't being picked up. I was scheduled from 2 to 10. I got here at the time I was supposed to now. And I always shoot to, of course. Of course, we're human. Anything can happen every once in a while or you know, a train could get delayed, you're here 10, 20 minutes late. When things happen, I try to inform the managers and everything. I've been here almost a year, we're approaching a year, oh, almost a year. So it's looking like, I believe 10 months. Training for me was a one week. Well, not training, trial, I should say. That's how it really started, trial period. And it was actually three of us that are currently here, plus one. It was four of us on trial, right? And it was me, Justin Swaroop, and some other guy. And uh, basically, Liam, was telling us it's four of you we only want two of you the only two of you will survive so we you know sat there on live chat tried to tell and i all, all i was focused on when i came here and i saw how many people were on the website every single minute of every day i, I saw gold literally because i'm like you know I, i've come from different industries where you have to try to find your leads push and get your leads there's a bunch of people on the website already you know what i'm saying they they're interested in jewelry so what did I do? I sat there and tried to talk to as many people as possible. I made sure I learned everything about jewelry possible so when I do talk to these people, I know what I'm talking about. Long story short, they were gonna keep two or four, they ended up keeping three of us. You know, I, I was gonna be the odd one out, but you know, I popped out with some big sales the last two days and they ended up keeping me. So I had a conversation with Liam, uh, like halfway through my trial period, right? And something I told him that caught his attention because he was ready to get rid of me, he he he's told me, um, was I'm not gonna get out of my seat. I'm not gonna go get lunch. I'm not gonna go eat. I'm not worried about nothing else until I make a sale. You eat what you kill, you know what I'm saying? And that was my mindset and that still is my mindset. Back in the day, you would go hunting. If you don't kill, you don't eat. So that, that was, that's what separated me from the competition. It's just, I sat in my seat, I didn't go eat, I didn't do it. I was, I was focused on getting the job done first. With Max is only trying to grow this business, that's what's gonna actually happen. So to be a part of that, it's a golden opportunity. And whoever doesn't realize that is just an idiot, really. <laughs> Got a classic Belova. I like classy stuff, you know, old school, 80s, 90s type style. I usually wear a hair and bone chain too. Got the 22 karat chain on from India, Indian gold with the ohm. It's a fancy link, it's not really, it's not like a traditional link, you know. So it's we consider it a fancy link. Well, this is 22 karat from India. It's an Om piece I got here at Trax, Trax1C.com. Om is the symbol of Hinduism, you know? I mean, there's a lot of deeper meanings and stuff, but that's the overall is Hinduism, you know? I mean, I got a cool, my nice little pinky ring, the flag on there. No, yellow gold down. Yellow gold, I got my, uh, my Cuban ring. I made this in India. Uh, this one I got at Trax. This is my bracelet, 22 karat. I got uh, my 19th birthday in India. And I guess that's it, that's all I got on today. Oh, you got the 305s, bestseller. Go get you them, good diamonds. That's it, man. Peter Trax is holding the store down. This is what I do. What do you call it? Uh, human resources department. I make sure everybody gets what they need. I make sure everybody's happy. You know what I'm saying? With all this jewelry, I make myself real happy, you know? I mean, with the rich, we got about 200 grams right here, 14 carat. I don't know, we like five to 10 carats right here. We got 18 carat gold right here. About eight carats too on this bad boy. Princess cut, special, all natural. We got the solid Cuban ring. This thing is probably like 30 grams up there. Then, you know, we got the little light solid um, seven millimeter Cuban, the classic Jesus piece, Biggie Smalls, baby, baby. Listen, so I have a 36 
presidential, and I'm definitely looking for the 40. 40 mm is my next thing, presidential. I, I'm, I've been dreaming about that for a little while, so that's next, coming soon. Hopefully next video. We rock the jewelry we sell, because we love what we do, we love what we sell, and y'all do too, that's why y'all come here. Let's see, let's go on, make the intern. Hey man, how you doing? Oh, this shop with you. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. What's up, man? Thank you for coming down. What's up, guys? I'm with Jay Green. We're in the Diamond District. Holding it down, locking it down. There's a lot of gold, there's a lot of diamonds, there's a lot of watches. So you stay on that side of the camera. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, let him know. No bullshit watches. Yo, bullshit. Yo, what's, your, what's your zodiac job, bro? Uh, Virgo. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> this is the chain. I'm going to check on that right this very second. And you want to send somebody to pick it up? Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to get my house. I'm going to pick it up on the way to the video. Okay, I, I, unfortunately, I have to leave uh, work. I had a prior uh, engagement, so I'm going to have to dip out of here right now. But I might. My, my team will come and drop it right to your car. Whatever you want. I'll take care of all that, okay? Peace. Oh, this is nowhere near being finished, right? No, it's done. It's fine. You pick it up right, or yeah, like Thursday. We had this is a chain we had in stock. But he didn't even know what he wanted, like, and it was. Damn. Yummy. And I made the piece, and like, Danny helped me connect it to the one that connected the piece itself, you know? I got This piece like this, like, on a dollar. And he got this, too. The Cartier skeleton. It took, I took off the band, because he's like a thin dude, so I got to take out links, and that'll be done tomorrow. So I'm holding on to the head. But he got this whole setup. He just texted, he, has, he gave me the deposit, and he didn't know what he wanted to do with the fender. But then he remembered the the Kenny piece. He's like, okay, let's do like Jay Green in like that GTA font. And then he was gonna put green in the middle, but then we just added green over here. He picked it up on Thursday last week. He took this shit's been to Miami already, I guess. There you go, man. Uh, tomorrow pick it up. I'll put it in the safe for the night, or unless you want to hold it, and then uh, I hold it for the night then, and put the band back on. We all good. Yeah, they did. That's why I, I took him there. So he four links off, and then you, you get the extra links and all that. And there you go. Why I don't watch the side speed with that. So when I first started, it was it wasn't all. It was like three or four of us. But the point is that like every fucking day was like, you know, don't get comfortable. Like one of you guys are gonna get clipped or whatever. Like for the first six months, of me working here, I was like borrowing my sister's and my mom's laptop because I, I thought like. I would be tight if I bought a laptop and then I got fired like the next day. One guy, he was like doing good in the beginning in the training. He was like, he knew how to talk, like make it seem like he knew something, but then like he didn't, it didn't pan out. And yeah, it was like three or four of us. And it was like that for a while. And then they started ramping up. It's only been like, well, not even only, but like the last few years has been like where it's like a constant fucking turnstile of people. Personally, I think we just need responsible people. I don't think we need more people. To be honest, my numbers, even from the beginning, they, they were never like, like number one there's been people that's outperformed me throughout my entire life here but the thing is like people will outperform me but then they're also with the numbers that they bring in they're also retards you know they can't they're responsible they're, they're stupid they're drug addicts and all that so maybe yeah you'll beat me like you'll make more money than me you know you make more sales but you're an asshole at the end of the day you know i made respectable numbers but i also didn't give anyone a problem like I've, i remember hearing people saying like it doesn't matter how much money you make you know if you're not like if you cause problems and like max has never really like yelled at me like that you know it's just uh, being responsible you know like like people was the guys that like worked here before this is, yeah this is vs yeah like just say anything to close a sale and i'm like I, i'd rather lose the sale and not deal with like the headache afterwards people will just on the phone like yeah yeah i'm gonna get this shit done in like a week or two just to make this sale if i know the piece is gonna take a week or two i'm telling the customer it's gonna take three to four weeks because i don't want to have to ask you for more time or if someone's like people or sometimes the guys will quote them like some stupid low price just to like get a deposit in and then once the thing comes out there's more money and i gotta hey actually i need more money i'll give you a high ass estimate and if i can lower it then I'll lower it. Same thing with the time frame. I'll tell you it's gonna take you like a month or two and I'll try to get it done in like two or three weeks. Everybody watching on YouTube, I need your help. Okay, I really need your help with my business. This is an opportunity from you, whether you're sitting on your couch or wherever you're at, to help 
me with the business. This is a young group of people that's working here and they're competent, but right now, or right, Melissa's managing them, Umid is looking for new people. You're gonna see how these people operate and we would love your help as well to manage this group of people because the whole f***ing world is gonna sit here and get involved. Hey, my name is Umid. I'm general manager of Trex NYC. And currently I'm uh, helping Melissa with hiring new uh, sales associates for the company. We need people who actually have some business acumen, know of business ethics, uh, right? Uh, maybe have some business education. If someone has been at a certain company for let's say five or six years, right? Even if it's not related to business, sometimes I would look at uh, this razor like, okay, maybe this is my guy. Maybe I can hire him, right? Maybe he has some potential to be trained to become a good uh, salesperson, right? Uh, what is something that will keep a person here? Uh, numbers. Uh, okay. <laughs> Definitely numbers. So the people that we're looking for should be honest and uh, be able to sell. That's most important, right? A lot of new hires, the, the main thing I've seen with new hires, not all the new hires, but some new hires for the past four years you'll get new guys come in here and they're like oh yeah i know this guy i know this famous guy or yeah yeah oh he's about to buy this this expensive ass piece and they start inflating their head they make one big sale or they think they're gonna make a big sale and their ego like they think they're fucking, they think that they think that they're the shit and then they don't want to listen to commands and shit like that you know oh, i made a two hundred thousand dollar sale i made a hundred thousand dollar sale what the fuck? You mean I gotta come in on time? What do you mean I gotta do this? What do you mean I gotta bring water down? You know, like what? The, and then at the end of the day, you made that, but you're still the new guy. So you, you know, you gotta eat shit in the beginning. Yes, yeah, so I just don't have an ego on you. You know. So I'll make sure that you know they're coming um, on time and all the calls are answered. So I said that, that at some point I just told them, hey, nobody is leaving mezzanine today unless all the calls are answered back and all the leads from the chats from last night are answered, all of them. This is unacceptable. I said, this is a joke. It doesn't happen often, but I feel like sometimes they slide, you know, and I'm not easy going though, you know, I'm not going to accept this behavior. And I've been pretty strict about it. Tracks OIC is open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. We're going to manufacture jewelry for you. We're going to be able to answer all your jewelry questions. And I'm going to supervise and I'm going to oversee every transaction to the highest standards. You can see how the jewelry is produced. But if you want personal service, these are the people that are supposed to help you. Right. Yes. Also, guys, if you think that you could be sitting here and selling, should have the tracks of YC, please reach out to us. Send us your resume. Yes. Send them the resume or reach out to Umid talking about penalties. Who the f*** wants to give you guys penalties in here? Not me. It's the same system as a parking ticket. One time I was parked out front, I came outside, and my car was gone. They towed it, because the city's a piece of shit. They towed my car for no reason. There's no reason to tow that shit. They just wanted to tow it for some quota, for some bullshit. That's bullshit. I don't want to do no bullshit here. That's why I'm going to do it transparently, and in an open manner, that everybody could see the inner workings, and we could decide on what's the right thing to can do get to know the people get to know what they have to say and you know find a group of people that could come in on time on a daily basis